Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. It continues to cover the least to the greatest of us. We are under it today. We are all under it today. Thank you for the blanket. Thank you for the cover. Thank you for the warmth and the compassion of your love. God, when we fall short, you covered the charge. But we ran out Lord, you ran in. And Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for that. We thank you for that. And God, we pray that you will honor, honor us with your presence even the more. Honor us with your love even the more as you continue to build us and as you continue to plant in us the seed of your grace, the seed of your mercy, the seed of your love. It's not by our works, but it's by your finished works. By your finished work, we are saved. So thank you today. Now let your word build us let the compassion of your words search our hearts. God, exchange our understanding for yours. Change our perspective for yours. Perspective of ourselves, perspective of those who are around us. God, change it today. Through your word, change it, change it, change us. We'll be careful to give your name praise. Honor and glory will be yours forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. thank God for his presence. Amen. We thank God for his faithfulness. Gospel Center, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Amen. Those that are in here, how you doing? It's all right to talk back. I mean, we in church. <laughs> it's all right. Yes, sir. It's all right to talk back. Amen. That's why you're here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You're here to push us a little bit. Yeah. Amen. And when you talk back, my grandfather used to say, that's like telling a dog, sick him. Amen. And we, we're tired of the devil. Amen. We're tired of the enemy. Amen. Trying to embark upon our camp. Amen. And we believe that God is greater. Amen. And he is stronger and mightier than any force. Amen. In any force in this universe. Amen. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Amen. Any force in this universe. Amen. So let's not minimize Amen. The Lord, our God, he's able to transform and change you from where you are into what he designed and purposed you to be. Amen. Let's not minimize the Holy One. Amen. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can even ask or think. And I know we got a lot of imagination in here. I know we got a lot of thinkers in here. Amen. He can do above and beyond, amen, what you are able to even ask or think, not do, amen, what you can imagine, glory to God, amen, hallelujah, amen, that's why grace, and that's why what he's done for you isn't predicated upon what you can do, amen, you can even imagine his saving grace and his saving power, amen, that he had in store and in plan for you. Amen. So I thank God for his spirit and thank God for his 
everlasting love that blankets us today. Amen. God is faithful. Amen. He's faithful. He is faithful. Amen. Amen. And I thank God, amen, for all that he has done. Amen. In fact, for all that he is doing. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Um, we're, we're going to the scripture today. And if you allow us to go to the book of Matthew, amen, we want to get in your way, amen, and out of your way all at the same time so that God can have his way. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 and through 27. Chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. And the word of the Lord said, Therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and fell not, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the, ran, and the rain descended, and the flood came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. If you would allow us Amen. To stay within the vein of what we've been talking about. Amen. In fact, rather to either even to revisit for those who have not heard. Amen. Uh, we want to encourage you in building your house. Building your house. Building your house. And, and I want to take you into the to the context of of building so that you can understand that you can build upon anything you you can build businesses you you can build uh, organizations you can build upon anything that you can imagine but today we're going to take uh, the moment to 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 encourage you that you must build and that we must build our families must build our homes so that we can stand on life's trials, so that we can stand on life's issues and troubles and circumstances that blow into our lives. We have to be able to stand when those things come our way and we don't expect them to come. We have to expect the wind will blow. But what is your foundation built upon. Yes. So our families must be built on a stable foundation. And in God's word, in God's expressed word, there are principles to be found to help our families. As we see in the text today, in the text, we find out that, that there is a wise man and there is a foolish man. They're both, they both had the same materials. They, they both, they both uh, had the same time frame in building this home. But the only difference between the two is what they build it upon. We build our lives on a lot of things. We build our lives on things that's temporal and not eternal. We build our lives and our hopes on things that are superficial, that are fleshy. Uh -huh. Instead of strengthening ourselves in the foundation of the true rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. The scripture says this 
And I want, I want to point you into the direction of love. We might as well stay there while the Lord is moving right there already. The foundation of love in a home is essential for the home to thrive. Yes, yes. It's love that God says he embodies. God is love. Which makes the word of God the perfect, it makes the perfect source yeah. to know what love means. And it makes it the perfect source to know what and how love works. Right. Yeah. And when we seek God's instruction concerning a foundational principle like love. It is to allow his word, his word to change us, uh -huh. to change our hearts, to change our minds so that we can pursue a selfless type of love. We have to continue to pursue a selfless type of love. And in our families, our families touch every area of our lives. Yeah, yeah. It's a major part of our communities. It's a major part of our neighborhoods. In fact, I reckon to say that it's a major part of our world. Our families is the foundation in which God chose to bless yeah. all families. Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 through 27 God made us in his image. He said let us make man in our image and in our likeness. I need you to understand that God didn't only say make, make man in God's image but he said make him in our image. And so who was there? God said let him, let him be made in the image of God the Father. Let them be made in the image of God the Son. And let them be made in the image of God the Holy Ghost. And so God has called us to be the image bearers or the reflection of the Godhead. Not only Jesus Christ, God the Son, but God the Father and God the Spirit. And all of them have attributes and characteristics and functions in which they find themselves agreeing and teaming up about because they all are three, but they all are one. They are, are, they are one. They are unified in their thinking. They are unified in their functioning. Everything that they do, amen, is to bring them into unity. Mm. That's why that's why we train up our children to be image bearers. That's why the scripture says train up a child in the way that they should go and when they're old they won't depart from it. We are we are commissioned to build up our families so that we can look more like the Godhead that we can respond like the Godhead in our homes and function in our proper respective places. Uh -huh. Oh. Yes, yes. Bible says in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3, the Bible says, God told Abraham and Sarah that in them all the families of the world, of the earth, will be blessed. God intentionally planned for his blessing to spread to all families. And God, he, he loves to work. He loves to work through us. Not only he, he loves to work through us, but he also loves to work for us. And he wants to use us. And every one of you that are here are a part of a family. And he wants to use you 
he wants to be used through you so that all the families in the world can be blessed. If you would, just real quick, indulge me for a moment. Put it in the chat. You said in the room, amen, Lord, I'm a blessing. I'm, I'm a blessing. I'm a, I'm a blessing. I'm, I'm a part of a, of a blessing plan. Amen. I'm a part of a, a blessing to someone else, to another family. If you call me blessed, you'll be blessed. If you try to curse me, you'll be cursed. Amen. I'm a part of this royal priesthood. I'm a part of this chosen generation, and I am blessed by God. Glory to his name. That's why our families are so vital. They are so honored in God's kingdom. And they're used as tools, as instruments to, to, to do God's plan and to do God's bidding. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. <laughs> he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Because sometimes we want to, we want to understand why is my home in disarray? Why is it dysfunctional? Why are the children acting up? It's because we have to align ourselves and function in the home as God ordained us to function. So we must guard our families. We must guard our homes. We must guard it against dysfunction by returning to honoring the principle that God has placed in the earth, that God has placed in your life so that you can bring order to God's kingdom. God is a God of order. Amen. And there is not anything a part of chaos that God is a part of. He's not a part of confusion. He's not the author of it. He didn't write that out for your life. He didn't plan that out for your life. So God uses this thing I, I realized in the military. He, he uses this thing called a chain of command. I'm getting happy already, Sister Kim, because we're going to bring order to some homes. Amen. Hallelujah. He uses this thing called a chain of command. Amen. This is not what I said, but this is how God ordained it. And sometimes we have to get ourselves out the way so that we can see it as God sees it. God uses this chain of command. And obviously, we all know that God is on top of the chain. And he often chooses to use us and exercise his authority through the family. Mm -hmm. We find that Adam and Eve were given dominion over the whore. In fact, uh, God commanded them to rule over everything he created, but God was yet in charge. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. right. that's, that's where we fall into trouble. Yeah. We forget who's in charge. Amen. Have, have you ever seen somebody have an opportunity to have some authority and they abuse it? They abuse the authority that's given to them, and they see you as beneath them, amen, instead of seeing you in the, in the same eyesight of God. I'm talking to Christian. I'm talking just Christian folk now. I ain't talking to the world. I'm talking to us. If we are to line up according to God's word, we have to line up in our homes. Because when we, when we decide to break away from God's authority, that's when things get turned upside down. That's when problems come in our lives. When, when we don't align ourselves to principles that God has given his children. 
He wants you to experience blessing, not the curse. He wants you to experience peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, not chaos. Not to be troubled in your mind. He come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. So why are you living beneath your privilege? First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 says, I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man and the man is the head of a woman and God is the head of Christ. I didn't say it, the word did. I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man and the man is the head of every woman and God is the head of Christ. First and foremost, you have to understand that the important job of kingdom husband, of kingdom men, is that we recognize we are under the authority of Jesus Christ. I almost walked off camera because that almost made me shout all right there all by myself. When you don't understand that you are under the authority of Christ, how can you walk in true authority? As husbands, we are called to lead our homes. But only that authority is validated by submission to Christ. It's only validated when you submit yourself to the authority of Christ. And then she comes in agreement. She comes into agreement of the authority that Christ has given the husband. And when the husband refuses the authority of Christ and attempts to follow his own way, he forfeit any expectation. Can y'all put that in the chat? He forfeits any expectation. Y'all know how we do. Girl, you ought to, uh, you should be doing, you should... You forfeit any expectation of submission from your wife. If we go back to the beginning, if, 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 if Adam would not have followed the rebellion that Eve got them into, let's just flip it. It's the same way. Why would she follow you into rebellion? Why, why, would, why, why should she follow you into your own way of thinking? Your own way of looking at the world. Your own perspective. Only when you subject yourself to the will of Jesus Christ will she fall in submission. All right. I'm coming all down everybody's road today. You, you might as well say amen for the other person because it's, it's going to turn the other, other corner. Scripture says, Ephesians chapter 5, that husbands are to love their wives just as Christ also loved the church. Colossians 3 and 14 says this about love. It says, above all these, put on love. Boy, if, if, if y'all keep saying amen, y'all going to make me happy. It says, put on love. Yeah. Uh -huh. That means love is a choice. Yeah. Love is a choice. And every morning you ought to choose to love your wife like Christ loved the church. He chose to love you while you were yet sinners. He chose to love you while you were yet messed up. Uh, love is a choice. All this stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm in love and I'm out of love. No, love is a choice. Put it on. And when you put on love, 
This is what happens when you put on love. The scripture says when you put on love, it, it binds everything together. When you put on love, it, it binds everything together in perfect harmony. So when husbands love their wives like Christ loved the church, it brings the house to order. It brings the house in harmony. It brings the house into unity. When you function like you're supposed to function as kingdom husbands, amen, you bring your home to order. Greater love has no one than this that someone lay down his life for a friend. Your, 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 your friend ought to be right next to you when you wake up in the morning. It ought to be the one that's cooking for you. It's, it ought to be the one that's helping you with the bills. It ought to be the one, amen, your friend, amen. You ought to lay down your life for your wife. All right. Let me come down your row. If you don't have a wife yet, amen, prepare yourself for selfless love. Sacrificial love. Binding love. Love that brings perfection into your home. The devil is a liar. Amen. He already got us having preconceived thoughts before we even get into marriage. And we believe marriage is a certain thing. But when we get into it, we find out that it's something else. It's all about sacrifice. Brother Christian, if you keep leaning back and forth like that, I'm going to preach harder. So let's examine, let's examine what this sacrificial love looked like. First Peter 3 and 7 says this, you husbands, I'm talking to you, you kingdom husbands, you potentially kingdom husbands, you husbands, in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way. As someone who's weaker since she's a woman and show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered. First thing you got to do, my brothers and my, hallelujah, first thing you got to do as kingdom husbands is to live with your wife with understanding. It's enough time for you giving excuses. I don't understand women. I don't understand how they think. I don't understand. The Bible says you ought to live with them with understanding. So that means you need to study them. <laughs> Wake up in the morning saying, hey, honey, how, how you feeling today? What, what you need today? Oh, what's your favorite color? Again, I, I need to know it again. It might have changed. Hey, Amen. You need to study her. You need to live with her with understanding. There shouldn't be so many miscommunications. And, and if you as a husband would sacrifice your ego, your pride, I'm talking to myself. If you would just do this for Christ's sake and live with understanding, your house will become binding. And your prayers won't be hindered. Woo! First, the Bible says you have to live with understanding. In fact, obeying God's word means when we get home from our jobs, amen, we go to our primary job. All right, I'm going to say that again. We don't just go home and sit down. We go to our primary job. And we begin to do the work that God has commanded us to do. Love our families, love our wives. Function in the way that God has ordained you to function as a man if you want to build your house. God has a work for each of us, each of us to do. Secondly, I want you to understand that you need to honor your wife. Oh, yeah. You need, you need to honor her. This means the place 
our wives in a position of significance. All right. You, brother, who's the head of your home, you, kingdom husband, kingdom man, who will be a husband, you are to put your wife in a position of significance in the home, treating her as someone who's special and worthy to be cherished. Yeah. 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 Uh, let me talk to the husband in you. Amen. If you're not one yet. Amen. Who can find a virtuous woman? Uh, this, this, this Proverbs 31 man, he has found. Oh, y'all thought I was going to say Proverbs uh, 31 woman. This Proverbs 31 man has found a precious, a precious gift. Whose value, whose price is far beyond rubies. What does honor look like? Honor says, I value your place in our home. I value your position in my life. I value who God has made you to be. And when I put you in a significant place where God has ordained you to be, it's binding. I try to belittle you and, and make you less of who God has designed you to be. You're not nobody's child. That's not your place in the home. Your, your place in the home is to be the wife. Let me come down your lane. Uh, uh, oftentimes, uh, Christ calls his church his bride. And he comes back. For his bride. Yeah. <laughs> and he makes himself ready and she makes herself ready for the groom. Uh -huh. Scripture says this, Proverbs 31, man, it says this, the woman of noble character, she is far beyond rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her. Uh -huh. This is what honor looks like. Yeah. He has full confidence in her. And in her lacks nothing in value. She brings him good. Now, I'm going to turn this back on you later. She brings him good and not harm. All the days. <laughs> not just Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. All the days of her life, she brings him good. She brings value to his life. Who can find a virtue? He that finds a wife, y'all know it, finds a, and favor with the Lord. Solomon said it like this, I found the one my heart loves. He, he, Solomon also said it like this, place me like a seal over your heart like a seal over your arm, for love is as strong as death. Yeah. It's jealous, unyielding as the grave. It burns like a blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench love. <laughs> I like this part. Rivers cannot sweep it away. If one were to give all the wealth of one's house for love, it will be utterly scorned. When you choose to put on love, you choose to not allow anything to come in between you and your wife. Let no man put asunder. Let no one separate you. Don't let the water separate you. Don't let the trouble separate you. Don't let, hallelujah, don't let the circumstance separate you. Choose to love her. Wake up and choose. Every man nudge somebody else and another man and say, wake up and choose. Wake up and choose today. Wake up and choose today to love like God loves. Yeah, we got to put on the strength of love. 
And just like Christ chose to love us in spite of our weaknesses, in spite of our insecurities, in spite of our frailties, his love consistently covered and strengthened us through the redemptive work of Christ. Husbands are to choose to love, to build our wives, our families through patience, through kindness, not being envious or boastful or proud, not being self-centered, but Christ-centered, not easily angered, keeping no records of wrong. Stop keeping records. Love doesn't do that. Remember when you, you said, you just said, don't stop keeping records. Oh, that, that, that takes transformation. I know there's some people in here saying, you know what, they did me wrong. I'm not perfect. I ain't going to forget. You know, I, you know, I see him. I forgive him, but, you know, I'm keep, I keep a record. I keep, I keep it all right here. The Bible says stop keeping records. Stop bringing it up. If you want to keep your family together, stop bringing up old issues. Stop bringing up old problems. Stop bringing it up. Love keeps no record of wrong. It's not delighting in evil, but it rejoices in the truth. Your love always protects. Your love always trusts. Your love always hopes. Your love always preserves. We should exhibit a love that never fails. Huh. Let, let me tell you right now, um, if, if your marriage failed, love didn't. Love did not. I'm going to say it again. If your marriage failed, love didn't. That just simply means you didn't follow something in the word of God. You did it your own way. Because love never fails. It never fails. Dysfunction came into your house because it wasn't cloaked in love. Love didn't fail you. You failed you. You got out of order. You are dysfunctional. And God wants to align you back into his blessing, into his kingdom plan. Tell somebody, say, get in line, get in line, get in alignment, get in alignment. God is a God of order. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's about that time. Scripture says that we ought to submit to Christ. Hallelujah. And, and, and treat her as fellow heirs. Fellow heirs of the grace of life. God has made the family, made husband and wife one. You're no longer twain, but he has made you one. And under the authority of Christ, uh, kingdom husbands, they look much different than what our culture operates in today. They look different. And so to submit or to be in submission in our culture today becomes increasingly unpopular. And if God has called man to submit, Sister, he called you to submit to. Let me just come down your road. Hallelujah. Let me just see you where you are. Glory to God. Because you need alignment too. When you are out of the will of God, your house is no longer binding. There is no harmony there. Glory to God. I'm going to tell the truth. If it hurts you, Glory, hallelujah. 
And in our society, it views a, a decision to submit as an act of weakness. Y'all know when y'all hear that word, you feel like, oh, I got to be weak. I'm, I'm, I'm weak. Uh, I'm, I'm under your thumb. I'm, I'm under your power. I'm, I'm under you. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm feeling like you, you're trying to control me. There go the word. There go. There it go. There it go. I found it. You're trying to control me. Uh, yeah, I know what God said, but you ain't controlling me. Yeah, I hear you in the spirit. The devil is a liar. He doesn't want your house to be in order. Oh, you, Sister Kim, you own it. That there, there's power. There's, there's power in, in submission. Amen. There's authority in submission. And if we find ourselves as kingdom wives doing what we're supposed to do in kingdom building our homes, God will be exalted and every lie will be cast down. Every lie will be cast down. God's order, every kingdom husband is called to be submitted to Christ as an act of obedience. And every wife is called to submit to her kingdom husband in the same spirit of obedience. Hallelujah. Amen. She's called to do that. She's called to be his help. <laughs> She's called to be his comfort. And she's called, scripture says it, it says it, not my words, but the word of God. That's why we need the word of God to change us. Because if you look at me, you just say, he's another man. He's just trying to, yeah, he's trying to say this. He's trying to say that. The devil is a liar. This is a scripture. Why submit to your own husbands? Not submit to your pastor. Not to submit to the deacon. Not to submit to that brother and treat him better than your own husband. The Bible says, submit to your own. All right. Submit to your own husband. He is the priest of your home. Submit to him. Am I, that's what the words say. How can you be submitted to leadership and you're not submitted to your own husband? Honor him, respect him as God has ordained it in your home. For the husband is the head of the wife and Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of the body. Now as the church submits to Christ, so wives are to submit to their husbands in everything. Now let me help you. <laughs> Biblical submission. First and foremost, it's not forced. Does Christ force down salvation down your neck? It's not forced. It's not a rule of power over you. It's not coerced into your life, but biblical submission involves willingness. Huh? Willingness. I'm giving my life. Okay, I'm, 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 can I bring it over? When you said yes to the Lord, you said, I submit to your authority. I submit to your rule. Whatever you say concerning my life, I take it as truth. And when the man aligns himself with truth, you cannot fail. And if he's following the truth of God's word in the home, his word ought to stimulate something in you and connect to you to fall in a willingness and an obedient heart. <sighs> It's a willing heart. Jesus said, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. I'm not kicking it down. True submission is of the will. Hear you. 
And this is the alignment that God desires for his families. And when problems arise, when our partner chooses to operate outside of his or her given responsibility, we fall out of line. Our children fall out of line. The school calling you all day long. Mad at your children and you out of order. Because when you came to the school, you was out of order. We saw you out of order. And then when you left, we know where we get it from. We know where she get that from. We know where he got that from. Okay, all right. It ain't their fault. When you are out of order, I'm going to say it one more time. When you are out of order, I'm going to talk to y'all right there. I'm going to talk to y'all because I've been hitting them up. When you are out of order, you are dysfunctional. You're dysfunctional, and you're not falling under kingdom rule or kingdom plan for your life. Yeah. So, being a willful, submitting wife, it, it does not give you the right to leave your responsibility. So your responsibility, let me show you, your responsibility is to be involved, is to be informed in every area of your household, to work with your husband, to guide the direction of the family, and confront your husband with truth when he get out of alignment with Christ. You're a helper. We, we see what happens when Eve get out of order. She should have got to tell her husband the truth. And when the husband is teetering out of line, baby, you know that that ain't right. Get back in alignment because we, we depending on you. you encourage them. Y'all see what I'm saying? Pray for them. Encourage them. Saying, honey, we, we, need you, we, we need you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might because we all depending on you because if, if you fall, then then my neck falls. But if, if you fall, then the body falls. If you fall, we all fall down. We're just like Humpty Dumpty. We're sitting on a wall. We're rocking back and forth. Amen. We need you. Amen. We need you. Brother Curtis, we need you. Men, we need you. Amen. Women, we need you. Amen. Fall in line. It's called you to be a helpmate. And still at the same time, has aligned you with God. And our favor is dependent upon you. Our homes are dependent upon you to live up to your value. I'm not talking about ruby value. I'm talking about far beyond yeah. ruby yeah. value. If you limit yourself to the to the value of a ruby, you're not living according to God's word. The huh? right. Bible says that a Proverbs 31 woman, it, her price, her value is far beyond. Yeah. Above, way beyond the value of rubies. Don't stop at a ruby. Girl, you are opium. You, you, you way above that. Find you another gem that's far beyond a ruby. Why? Because the Bible says man is not, it's not good for us to be alone. He said, I will make him a helper. I will make him someone suitable for him. Not suitable for Jimmy and Joe and Jacob and all of them other J's. Someone suitable just for you. Why? Because scripture says in Psalms 33 and verse 20, it says, our soul awaits for the Lord. He is our help. Y'all see who the Lord is? The Lord is our help and our shield. And so God has made you the living manifestation of the same thing he is. Our help, you're creating his image. You're creating his likeness. He, he's designed you to be our help 
and our shield cover us. Don't talk about us. Oh, I almost left y'all again. I almost left the camera again. Help us. Shield us. Love us. Pray for us. Help us. Align us. Get us back on track. Because when you say, I'm going to stop helping, you are out of order. I'm, I'm going to just close my mouth. God didn't ordain you to do that. He didn't ordain you to close your mouth. Say so. The words of a, the wounds of a real friend, it might, it might hurt for a minute. I need you to say something to me. I, I tell you what, my wife tell me every time I said the Lord said, every time I, Sister Kim, every time I said the Lord said this, the Lord said that, she'll remind me two weeks later when I done forgot, what did the Lord tell you? That's, that's a good wife. Didn't the Lord tell you? Didn't he say to you? When, when you get discouraged and in your feelings, did, didn't God say? Did, did, didn't, he, didn't he already tell you this was coming? Didn't, didn't he already tell you that you won't have to worry in this fight? Amen. Just stand still and see. Didn't the Lord say? When you stop talking, you are out of order. to understand because there's no perfect husband. There's no perfect husband. I, I'm sure that's no perfect wife. And the thing that happened in the garden is that, is that they got in a pointing contest. And their children were affected. You see it later on. Cain killed his brother. Dysfunction carries on to generations. But today we got to break that. We're breaking that in our homes because we are getting in alignment. We are kingdom families. Amen. Put that in the chat if you would. We're kingdom families. We're kingdom families. We're kingdom husbands. We're kingdom wives. And we belong and we are submitted to God and his program for our lives. Lord, the Lord is, he, he spoke to us some time ago. There was a season the Lord said, I'm going to bring families into gospel center. Families. Families into gospel center. And he's going to cause blessing to be upon these families' lives. But when they come in, they're going to come in dysfunctional. They're going to come in with problems and issues. The devil is going to try to run, ransack over, over their lives. And those who are already in the household of faith, amen, you got to get your house in order. Because our lives have to be an example to all other lives so that all the families in the earth will be blessed. And so when these families come in, they are dependent on the reflection, the image of Christ being in you, the real, the true reflection of God's image and likeness in your homes, in our homes. I said this one time before Gospel Center, I said, if y'all see my wife all upset and I'm up here preaching, y'all going to be looking at her more than y'all looking at me. Y'all going to be looking at her more than you're looking at me. Because prayer can be hindered. And if your communication can be hindered, I believe your witness can be hindered as well. With man, if your communication with God, your communication with man can be hindered. 
why God compels us to grow in favor with both God and man. So we have to live lives worthy of our call. God has called you kingdom husband. God has called you kingdom wife. I ain't forgot about you children. I'm coming down your road next week. I'm coming down your road next week. Because there has to be whole order in the whole house. In the whole house. I thank God for his word. Because when it penetrates our hearts, it penetrates our hearts so that we can voluntarily, there go that word again, willingly, voluntarily submit to his plan. To his plan. I'm going to give you a moment right where you are. Just take a look at your life. Take a look at all of the relationships in it. Just take a moment to look at all of the relationships in it. Are they as, as, as well as God would want them to be? And in fact, I'm going to go beyond your family a little bit. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm go into the family of God. Is there someone in the family of God that you have to get back in alignment with so that we all can fall under blessing so that we all can fall under favor? Is there somewhere in your life that you're not functioning as you ought to be functioning and it's causing dysfunction in the Lord's church? Has God called you to be a witness to share your testimony with your loved ones? And you sat at home and you watched all the games and disobeyed the mandate on your life to minister to them. God isn't going to beat you over your head, but he sent his word to deliver you. He sent his word to deliver you deliver you from where you are and to bring you up to a higher place in him. This, this message you can say has been given for the church because I believe that we're living in, in last days. And in last days the Bible says that There'll be divorces. Are, are, are we tired of the testimony being in the church? In the church, so many divorces. In the church, so many broken relationships. Well, we continue to point at one another, but... We ought to be pointing at ourselves. This is to the church. This is to us. This is to us. And, and if you feel like you've done nothing wrong, you you in right alignment, I'm going to thumbs up you. I'll give you a thumbs up. Because some of us are really honest. And we understand that all, not only sin, but all have come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short. So there's some areas in our lives where we're just falling beneath the standard that God has for us. And some of that might be in our homes and our position in our homes. I, I say this to everyone that hear us. If you marry, your home is your first ministry. And 
There's no way you can minister to the house of God. No way you can minister to the house of God if your house is out of order. For those of you that that says the Lord's called me to evangelist and missionary and preacher and teacher, get your house in order. That's your first ministry. Before you can do anything here, your first ministry is at home. If he acting up, stay at home. Work with that. Till things start changing. Again, he that has an ear, let him hear. Father God, we thank you today. God, we pray that this word soaks into our spirit. Soak into our, our minds. God, we command the spirit, the spirit of the enemy. The spirit of division, the spirit of chaos. And the spirit that causes us to be deaf to your word. be loose now in the name of Jesus. We bind you in the name of Jesus. You have no rule and authority over our homes, over our families, over our community. God, this moment, this day, we take back real estate in our homes. Satan, the Lord's against you. Strong man, the the Lord's against you. blood is against you now. Order. Come to order now. We cast you out. Cast you out of the mind. Cast you out of the wheel. Order. God's divine order. In you. In you. Awaken us, Lord. Become alive. Be reflections and images image bearers of the Godhead. Image bearers of the Godhead. We thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. We expect greater from you. These things we pray and ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, people of God. Man, we love you. And I believe that the Lord loves you the best. And uh, whoever you are, um, get your house in order. If you have anyone that you need to talk to and ask them to forgive you for, for your ability to be out of alignment, out of touch. Just ask them. Ask them to forgive you. Husbands, ask your wife to forgive you. Wives, ask your husbands to forgive you. Children, ask your parents to forgive you. Parents, ask your children to forgive you. Get it right. Before we shout all over the church, get it right at home. Before we dance on a mess, amen, give God true worship, amen, and get it right with your family. Glory to God. God bless you. We love you, amen, and I love you, Gospel Center. I love you, Gospel Center, and I'm praying the very best for you. I'm praying God's very best for you, amen. Keep on reaching. Keep on trusting God, amen, and keep on believing God. Man, God bless you. Have a wonderful day.